The Meta Quest 2, formerly known as the Oculus Quest 2, is the most popular wireless VR headset on the market today and one of the most affordable at $299 US dollars. But what exactly do you do with the Quest 2 once you get one? What are its best features? Are there any downsides with getting a Quest 2? And then does the novelty of the Quest 2's VR experience does that wear off after six months enough to make it so getting one in the first place isn't really worth it? Well, I'm gonna answer all of those questions and more, and first, let's start with that last one. While the novelty with the Quest 2 for me has worn off a bit over the past six months, I'm surprised to say that I've actually been using it about two to three times a week over the course of six months, simply because the Quest 2 offers an immersive experience like no other device I currently own, and it has a fitness component to it as well, which makes playing a game on it a great way to take a break and get my heart rate up. So yes, I do think the Quest 2 has been worth it. Now, what exactly do I mean by an immersive experience? Well, for those who are unfamiliar with VR, which stands for virtual reality, when you put on a VR headset like the Quest 2, its screens will take up your entire field of view. You can look around, down, up, anywhere you want, and you're entirely immersed in whatever the display is showing you. So game characters are now in their true to life height. So when Darth Vader, for example, started walking towards me in the Vader Immortals game, I got this feeling of holy this guy is tall. And picking up a lightsaber in VR and wielding it like a Jedi, it's, it's as close as I've ever felt to what being a Jedi would actually feel like. Now the Quest records videos by default in a one-to-one -one ratio and not in 4K. Plus the footage you see of VR games is gonna look a little bit more shaky because it's capturing these slight hand and head movements as you play the game, which is not really how it looks when you have the headset on. Everything is pretty smooth most of the time, so just keep that in mind as you look at this footage I've captured. Now visuals are only half the story with the Quest 2. Sound and their controllers make up the other part of the VR experience. The Quest has speakers built into the headset that emit sound just outside of your ears. So they're obviously not noise canceling or anything like that, but for what they are, they're actually pretty decent. Decent enough to the point where I haven't felt the need to rush out and go buy a dedicated set of headphones, which a few companies like Logitech make for the Quest 2. The sound on the Quest headset isn't going to produce a ton of bass, but it's clear and crisp. And most importantly, it's 3D sound. So just like spatial audio with Apple devices, and 3D sound for Sony's headsets for the PlayStation 5, which by the way, we have also done a long-term review of. So if you want to see videos like that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the link in the description below for that review. The Quest's 3D audio can make it sound like something is coming up behind you. And that specific ability helps keep you even more immersed in what you're doing on the Quest. The controllers for the Quest are what allows you to interact with the 3D virtual world that you're immersed in, whether that's wielding a lightsaber or picking up objects, with the multiple triggers, buttons, and Joy-Cons found on each controller, they allow you to do quite a bit. And each controller is powered by a single AA battery. And the battery life has lasted me throughout the six month testing period. And I've only just now started to see notifications in the Quest to replace the batteries for the controllers. And I like that when you have the headset on, it's easy to check the battery level of the controllers either in settings or just by looking down at your controllers. The Quest will generate a virtual version of your physical controller with the battery level of each controller displayed on top of them. Now I did run into an issue with my right controller over the past six months after it accidentally slid off my couch onto the hardwood floor. And I noticed that the battery compartment door developed this creaking noise, which is super annoying when you're playing. Luckily, there is an easy fix for that. I just folded up a piece of paper multiple times, wedged it into the battery compartment, and that eliminated the issue. And speaking of battery life, for the Quest 2 headset, it's rated for two to three hours of battery life, and typically in my testing, I've seen closer to two hours. And for a gaming device, that battery life may seem a bit short. And when I first used the Quest, I did run out of battery one or two times, but that was mainly because the headset was new. And VR is one of the coolest 
experiences I've ever had with a piece of technology. So when I first got this headset, I was using it a ton, but as the weeks went on, I found I was using the Quest in more short 30 to 45 minute bursts because by that point, I'll likely be at risk of breaking a sweat or I'm tired or just want to give my eyes a rest. Depending on what you're doing with your headset, like if you enable the 120 Hertz option, the headset can run a bit warm, which is going to cause you to sweat faster. And speaking of sweat, if you're planning to share your headset with others in your home or just in general, I think it's worth it to install the rubber standard facial interface on the headset to prevent sweat from seeping into the foam cushion. Now you can develop motion sickness with this headset. And again, it all depends on what you're actually doing with the Quest 2. A bit of advice here though, if you do develop any motion sickness or you feel nauseous with the headset on, immediately take it off. Trust me, you do not wanna try to push through. It'll only get worse and it's gonna make you feel nauseous for the rest of the day if you don't take the headset off immediately. And this is why I will typically stick to experiences with the Quest 2 where I am just standing up, I'm stationary and things like in Beat Saber are just moving at me. I find those experiences I don't develop motion sickness with versus other experiences where you're on like a virtual plane or roller coaster or you're having to turn your head and really move around a space a lot. Those are the experiences where I've found I get more motion sick. Overall, I'd say the Quest's headset is in terms of comfort, uh, pretty okay. Like I can put this on 30, 45 minutes easily and it's perfectly comfortable. Even though this thing actually doesn't weigh that much, uh, there's still probably some room to take some of the weight out of it that would help with overall comfort, especially if you're playing uh, for a long time. And another thing that they did to make it even more comfortable for players is they include a glasses spacer that you can insert into the headset. It's pretty easy to install. You just pull off the black plastic headset part, then insert the glasses spacer, and then put the black plastic headband piece back in. Meta did a really good job making the Quest 2 easy to set up. I was surprised at how smooth the tracking of the controllers and the 3D effects were. The Joy-Cons on the controllers were intuitive to use to set up Wi-Fi on the headset, and the controllers overall are very responsive. All right, now the next question I had when I got this headset, and yes, I know it still looks goofy. That's why I put it back on for your entertainment. The next question I had is, okay, I'm ready to play VR. How do I keep myself from crashing into the TV? Well, Meta of course thought of this and developed the Guardian Boundary System, which basically allows you to tell the headset where the floor is and paint the space where you want to play in on your floor and boom, you're good to go. Meta has also released a recent feature that allows you to mark the walls and furniture in your room. But I found when you do this, it'll cause the Quest 2 to be a bit more laggy than you want. So I've turned that feature off and I just use the room skill Guardian Boundary, which allows you to just move around the space that you select. You you also have the option to choose a stationary boundary as well, and you can even mark your real couch to be part of your Guardian Play area. So you'll be able to find your couch in VR with the headset still on and sit down on it, which is pretty useful if you want to do things like browse the game store or watch a YouTube video in VR. I was also surprised to find out that not only will the Quest 2 save your Guardian boundary, but let's say you walk into another room where you have one saved, it'll bring up that one as well, which is pretty impressive and it's easy to get your bearings in your room with pass-through mode. You just double tap the right part of the headset to turn on the moves cameras so you can see around your room. So that's a little bit about how the Quest works, but what exactly have I been using it for over the past six months? Well, I've used it mainly for gaming. I found the Quest 2 to be a great device to get my heart rate up playing a game like Beat Saber, where your controllers will become lightsabers that you use to slash through boxes time to music. It gets my heart rate up it's fun and it keeps me coming back to the quest every week. The Quest even has a calorie burn overlay, which you can turn on. And when you look up in VR, it'll tell you how many calories you've burned and you can set a calorie burn goal in the Oculus Move app and enable notifications to get notified in game when you've hit that goal. And there are a lot of fitness games that allow you to do even more like Supernatural, for example, one of the most popular, which allows you to do boxing, meditation, and a similar Saber game to Beat Saber. But it costs $20 a month, which is why I 
I've stuck with a game like Beat Saber, which still gets my heart rate up, you do have to pay to unlock songs with Beat Saber, but there's no monthly subscription. The quest can also be quite fun when you have people over as well. It's easy to cast footage of what the person is seeing on the Quest headset to a Chromecast enabled TV right from within the share menu on the Quest. Plus, I've been told it's hilarious to watch me flail around my arms with the headset on, so what do you think? Let me know in the comments how ridiculous you think it looks having the Quest headset on. Now, to share to an Apple TV or another display using Apple's AirPlay, that's a bit more involved. You'll have to cast to your iPhone and then screen mirror the iPhone through AirPlay to stream the footage on an AirPlay display like my Apple TV. Though I've noticed the performance you get on the TV is significantly worse compared to casting directly from the headset to the TV. And if you're interested in upgrading your own TV streaming experience, check out the links in the description below to reviews we've done on the Chromecast with Google TV and the Apple TV 4K. So those are the killer apps that have kept me coming back to the Quest over the past six months, but what about downsides? I've actually found quite a few. First, I was kind of surprised there aren't that many free trials of games, so in order to try a game, you're typically gonna need to purchase it, and then for whatever reason, if you don't like it, you can return that game within a three-day return window as long as you've played less than 30 minutes of that game. There are quite a few free games and experiences on the Quest, thankfully, but there are, are a lot of games that I want to try out, but I'm not sure I would want to plunk down $30 on right away. All games are purchased through the Quest Store, but because the Quest 2's OS is a forked version of Android, you can sideload apps onto it through apps like SideQuest. I'm also surprised Meta hasn't released any sort of Wii Sports bundle-like game with a bunch of different cool sports games to try out in VR. I, I think that would be really smart. Another downside with the Quest 2 is you currently still need a Facebook login to use the device. However, the company has announced this will no longer be the case August 2022 when you'll be able to sign up for meta accounts, bypassing Facebook accounts altogether, and you'll be able to create multiple meta accounts, which historically has been something that's been very difficult to do with the Facebook account requirement. Now, the last downside I found with the Quest 2 is actually a downside for all of VR, and that's you're going to need space to be in VR, which often will involve moving furniture if you're in a semi-cramped apartment. So depending on how much space you have, this could be a huge deal or no issue at all. So that's been my experience with the Quest 2 over the past six months and what I've used it for, and Overall, I think this is a pretty good product for the money, even for me where I only play a couple of games on it, which I should point out isn't outside the norm for me. I do the exact same thing with my PlayStation 5, and heck, I've even spent like $1,300 on a gaming PC just for a single game, City Skylines. So I may be a bit atypical when it comes to the way I game, but the Quest 2 over the past six months, it's kept me coming back time and time again because of the immersive experiences it can give you and no other product on the market today can deliver the experiences the Quest 2 can at this price. All right, so who do I think this device is for? The Quest 2 is kind of the next generation of the Nintendo Wii, PlayStation Move, and Xbox Connect. The Quest 2 is basically the next generation of that type of experience, but way more immersive. Now, yes, it's not as good for multiplayer when all of the players are physically in the same room, Maybe we'll get there one day with VR, but right now, since each headset costs $299 US dollars, it's a bit cost prohibitive to try to do that. The Quest 2 is also a great preview of future VR technology and experiences. And after spending six months with the MetaQuest 2, I'm more enthusiastic about VR and its potential than I was before I got the headset. I think VR will eventually just be great at these four categories, gaming, fitness, entertainment, and social. In the short term, today, I think there are two killer applications for the Quest, and those are gaming and fitness. And this is likely the area where you're gonna see competing headsets from Apple and Sony come in. Sony's PlayStation VR 2 will likely just be gaming focused, but Apple's the one to watch and see if they can do what the Quest 2 does, but better. The only caveat with that headset is it's likely going to cost three to four times as much as the Quest 2. 
As for social experiences, there's the Horizons World app. That's free and allows you to hang out with people from all around the world and play games, but overall, I'd say it's still very early days for that type of experience. As for entertainment, you can download the YouTube VR app onto the Quest, sit down on your couch, and watch YouTube on a virtual big screen. And this was honestly the most surprising thing I found with the Quest 2 and VR in general. This technology isn't actually that far off from being able to supplant the big screen experience you get in a movie theater, minus the audience, of course. Watching footage from Top Gun Maverick's trailer on the big screen, it felt so similar to how watching the actual movie felt when I was watching it in a theater. I think Meta or Apple or whoever else out there is making a headset just needs to make a headset that's a bit lighter, more comfortable to wear for long periods of time, like the duration of a movie or a binge watch, and then they need to make the headset have a retina display so the resolution is better and it actually looks like you're looking at a 4K screen or better, and then be able to pair that headset with noise canceling over the ear headphones that are comfortable and have spatial audio and boom, you've got a big screen experience in VR with fantastic surround sound. Now, if you've used a VR headset like the Quest 2 or another headset, or you own a VR headset like the Quest 2, let me know down in the comments what you think the future of VR is going to be. Now, as we release this video in mid-2022, if you're looking at getting a Quest 2, you can use the purchase links here in this video to learn more. The next generation Quest 3 isn't expected for at least another year. Now, Meta is supposed to announce a high-end headset by the end of 2022 that might be called the Quest Pro, and that's supposed to feature new AR and face tracking capabilities, new controllers, improved graphics, and come with a higher resolution display, but it's likely going to cost more than $1,000 US dollars. If you've got the money to spend and want better VR hardware, it might be worth it to wait for this headset to come out. But for the average user, I think that's just looking to get into VR, I think you're still better off going with a Quest 2. Now, if you have any further questions about the Quest 2, leave them in the comments below and we'll answer them there. And while you're down there, hit that thumbs up button if you liked this video and found it helpful and subscribe to the channel for more long-term reviews of tech products and gaming products like this one. And if you're looking for what to watch next, check out some of our other long-term reviews of gaming hardware, like our review of the Sony PlayStation 5, which you can get to by clicking on the video to my right. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.